Hello gamers, I'm Aaron Crow, and welcome to MV Piece, the show where I pick the most valuable pieces out of your favorite board games. Today's game sends players to the seedy underbelly of a dark fantasy world, as they aim to hire the most dangerous and cunning strangers in the land. That's right, we're going sellsword shopping at the Crimson Company. Crimson Company pits two players into a bidding war to recruit thugs, assassins, merchants, and even creatures. That's right, we don't discriminate here. Even the undead have value and feelings too. Every member of your cutthroat team is tasked with taking control of towering castles. This is a fantastic dueling card game which is unique and that players start with no cards at all and must use only a handful of gold and their wits to prevail. I solve my problems with this. But also this when this no work good enough. Now don't be fooled. In this small box is big strategy. Every piece has significant impact on your game. So naming just a single MV piece will be no trivial task. Starting with the prize to be won each suspenseful round, the castles. You want these two to be exact, because one simply isn't enough for a refined taste. And taking one before your opponent does is a great way to put the pressure on. It makes for a very satisfying trophy to display. What's that? I can't hear you from way up here in my castle. Some castles introduce special rules, adding extra layers of complexity to consider and variety to future games. To acquire cell swords, they require the shiny stuff. Gold, gold, they require gold. The trick of it is, cards don't have a set cost. You name a character and your price, and your opponent chooses to let you complete your purchase or match your price and buy the card instead, but paying you the declared amount of gold. So you can actually end up doubling your gold, but they essentially pay to steal your turn from you. Sir, how dare you poach my clumsy ogre? It would seem my pride does indeed have a price. So it's not only knowing what something is worth to you, but also your competitor. There is a lot to be gained by knowing a card's value in any given moment on either side of the table. And utilizing that information is what Crimson Company is all about. Each sellsword brings something unique to the table, both in ability and thematic flair. A bully, beggar, bard, or berserker are just a few of the diverse company you may keep. In addition to general strength, they may let you flip cards over, gain extra coins, make cards stronger, make cards weaker, move cards, steal cards, and even revive cards. See, aren't you glad you made friends with that undead guy? Now go talk to that dodgy dealer in Mad Cook. Each character ability can completely change your approach from turn to turn, as you attempt to rally enough of them to score and conquer a castle and several expansions to the game further increase the roster with more ominous, mythical, and magical beings. So coins may buy you dangerous company, but the title of MVP cannot simply be bought. Ironclad integrity here. With that in mind, the winner is... The coin. Yeah, I know I said I couldn't be bought, No matter how advantageous the sellsword market may be, it all comes down to the power of the coin. Not only is it important to budget your gold for that critical purchase, but you gotta be bold enough to set a high price for what you know your opponent wants to capitalize on their progress. The battlefield is always plainly laid out in Crimson Company, so it's all about the mind games with the person sitting across from you. These coins have tremendous strategic weight on the outcome of the match. And that is why the coin is my MVP piece of Crimson Company. 
But if you disagree with my decision, I formally challenge you to a duel in the comments. I will see you there at dawn. Or next time on... Feelings. Feelings. Feelings.